BTC, F, Algo, XRP, LTC. You asked, we listen. We're charting all the coins that you are asking for right here live at UTG showing entries, what the conditions are we're looking for for entries and how you can follow along with us every single week. Stick around till the end of the video to see how you can get your favorite coins charted in next week's video. Hey, text and ads here with you from unitytradinggroup.com. And as I mentioned a moment ago, you've asked us to chart up the coins that you are looking for entries on. We haven't really done this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to fresh TA coins. Uh, we've obviously got BTC and LTC up here and a few others that we, uh, we go through a little bit regularly. But as we approach that, I don't want to say the alt season word, but as we approach the time where alts are popping, we're seeing OMG making some really good moves, Seller making some really good moves, Algo obviously obviously made some sick moves this week. ICX, which we called inside the Discord, did a lazy 40 odd percent in two or three days. So we're going to show you how we TA these coins and the conditions that we're looking for on entries. And as I said, stick around till the end of this video and we're going to show you the exact way that you can ask directly of Ads and I each week as we chart up your favorite coins, the ones that you're looking for entries on or that you have questions on that we will chart here live for you. So let's get directly into this one. Uh, BTC US. USD. We spoke about this last week, ads, and we spoke about it down at around the sort of the, the 42, 43K level. We said we were at a little bit of an inflection point. And admittedly, I guess for myself, I was looking for a little bit of, of I guess, downside action before the move um, continued upwards. This was sort of the move that I was looking for. Uh, and that we actually drew out where we were saying, hey, this is looking like a little bit of a triangle formation. But admittedly for me, I thought we'd get a little bit of a sweep of the lows here, just sort of the, the last little shakeout before we can, uh, we sort of continued back up towards this level. But um, lo and behold, uh, the formation actually played out ads. And here we are now at this supply zone. Um, Again, I'm kind of looking for a little sweep, like anywhere between sort of 45 to 44K, that last little shakeout from this zone before headed back up towards that 52K level. But I'm interested to get your thoughts, man. What are you feeling on this? To be honest, I'm pretty aligned with you uh, when it comes to, you know, getting a little bit of downwards movement from here is probably the most logical step, I would think, uh, for BTC. And, you know, just because of, some very simple things that we've got a pivot point up here. Of course, we have broken through it just a little bit. However, we are still quite overbought or we have been overbought yes. for quite some time yes. uh, in on the four hour time frame, of course, uh, in this instance, because, you know, as we are quite familiar with our steamroller indicator, as we're quite familiar with the RSI as well. Uh, and of course, we do speak about levels of supply quite regularly here at UTG as well. It's quite evident that we will pull back uh, to the most notable level at 32.38.2, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> on the fibs uh, to give us a, you know, a little bit of a pullback to cool off some of these indicators before a possible, you know, move to the upside or, or a, a shot for the next level of supply time. <laughs> Yeah, and, and if we deconstruct this a little bit, and even though I was looking for, for downside moves when we had this triangle formation, this is a really, I guess, it's, it's counterintuitive saying it now, but this is quite a reliable formation, this triangle formation, because we see this uh, one, two, three, four, five, before we make a move to the upside, where we will often come up retest before a move to the upside. Now, the reason why, excuse my phone, the reason why we kind of spoke about there being a little bit more downward momentum, we were looking at the global markets, looking at the situation with Evergrande over in China, which is some very interesting news coming out of that today. But for myself, uh, I, I guess I was a little bit caught up in the overall macro scheme of things, not necessarily looking at this being, uh, I guess, a, a major um, a major demand level uh, where price would halt before any moves to sort of to the upside. So glad to be a little bit humbled by that. But the beautiful thing is, as we speak about inside the Discord, we talk about averaging in buys. We don't just say, look for that bottom level at 40K. You might want to set your buys for example, 5, 10, 10 percent uh, apart. So you're averaging in on these levels in order to capture move to the downside, um, be, we, you know, where they might consolidate before moves up. So that's called a dollar cost averaging strategy. And we're going to break that down in the video for you in the next week or so and show you exactly how you can do that. But uh, yeah, ads, exactly as we said before, if you're looking at supply and demand, unitytradinggroup.com forward slash supply and demand, and you'll understand why as we've broken into this level now, why a pullback 
black is necessary, as Ad said, the beautiful swing low to swing high. We're looking for Fibonacci retracements. The 38, albeit down to the golden pocket zone, is always very relevant for pullbacks. And this will be very healthy for the overall scheme of BTC to do something like this before it continue moving to the upside ad. So yeah, definitely uh, a great time to be a trader at the moment. And as BTC continues to move up, I would expect the, uh, the other alt majors to do the same. So a really, really exciting time for BTC and uh, for crypto throughout October, man. Absolutely. And I do agree. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. We do need to obviously, you know, follow the charts, uh, see where it has made higher highs and, uh, and higher lows. And this is definitely an instance, you know, to the point where we have made a higher high, which is very nice to see. Uh, a higher low would be the 38, 50, 61, uh, the golden pocket area, or the three levels of Fibonacci that we, uh, that we see uh, quite often. And of course, moving up from there would be nice. So we'll, uh, we'll assess this again later in the week time. All right, we'll have a look. I can't hear you, man. Oops, sorry, I was gonna say one, one thing to be very mindful of is that structure to the left. There's not a whole heap yeah. holding that back either. So clear this zone and then we kind of got open air up to that, um, to that top supply zone. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into uh, F. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful F, uh, my baby. So we made a move off the lows there, similar to BTC down at that 20 sort of 700 level. We consolidated within that range that we spoke about being this uh, sort of range here, which was, uh, which Edge was bang on about here. This was, this was really the zone to be, um, to be paying attention to. And then again, the FIBs doing their work as we break mm -hmm. out sort of of this level. Now we're halting at the 78.6. Again, for me, I have buys laid down to about 3,200 to capture this golden pocket zone because really what I'm looking for and as as you will see um, if we deconstruct this this was the uh, the pattern that I, I had drawn out on uh, on ethereum which we have seen quite a fair bit as as bottom markers and again I was looking for more downside moves but this this pattern that I've just drawn in there it is a, it is a really great breakout formation which I guess I was a little bit blinded by uh, not really seeing that but again the, the averaging in was a beautiful way to, to, to counter that so <clears throat> as we've broken out now I really want to see that 3200 level sort of hold uh, around here I don't know why I'm doing a um, doing a, a circle I need to get this square I really want to see this sort of level hold uh, above this previous high in order for us to, to head back down towards that golden pocket zone and then continue our moves back up um, back up towards this uh, supply ads and I would 100% wholeheartedly agree because, and the reason why I do is I'll show you with fibs. If even if I move the Fibonacci levels uh, from our swing low, let's say the swing lows here, let's go back to the swing high. We still have a great deal of, you know, respect around these 50 fibs, which would then coincide, of course, with the area that we had previously on the chart but it does coincide very nicely with the liquidity that we've seen as support on the left-hand side, of course, even extending to the, further to the left here in August. And uh, we do have that immediate resistance to the left-hand side as well, of course, in September. So if we do see a pullback, and I think it's in the same boat as BTC, where we're observing the overbought conditions of both our uh, steamroller and RSI, I think that's the area that is most notable, I guess, 3850, of course, both being that most, most notable area where Ty did mention for a further move to the upside, if we're going to see that occur like BTC, that's very, very evident to me. Yeah, 100%. And as a beginner trader, if you don't have the money for tools or you don't have the ability to, to, to grab our steamroller indicator or gravy train, which really will just take your trading to the next level and give you that ultimate confirmation of an oversold or an overbought condition, you can use something. Go to our TradingView profile. You can download or, or, or capture for free um, our, uh, our free RSI tool, which so... <clears throat> The, to, to break down RSI very, very simply, if we are above the 50 or the median line, we're considered to be in a bullish environment, particularly if you get a four hour close that remains or holds above the 50 and uses that potentially as level of support before headed up towards this top parallels. That's a great uh, an entry condition. But again, as you start to breach outside the parallels here of 
the RSI zone, it indicates that people are getting to a point where it's a little bit overbought. There's too many people buying at weakened levels and we're due for a pullback. So really what we want to see is, is this RSI come back down and retest this 50 zone um, where we've seen in the past sort of around these levels here where we've, we've acted as a level of resistance uh, before we have, have moved to the downside or, or a level of support as we have had here before continuing to the upside. So as a beginner trader, a very simple tool you can employ in your trading strategy is the RSI. It's the relative strength index. It tells you the strength of a move uh, or the, the strength of, of a trend for a particular coin. So very, very reliable indicator and one that you should probably get a hold of uh, through our trading view account ads. And I think it will be a uh, very, very good tool in your toolbox because we use it uh, very, very often and we rely on it very, very heavily. So, 100%. All right, let's get into Algo USD, not the uh, BTC pair. I think we better look at the USD pair. <clears throat> and this is one that we've been charting inside the Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday, I popped in. Uh, I, we don't like to give things away too much in the Discord because we like people to be able to make their own decisions. But I popped in yesterday. Uh, just with, with an eye emoji and because uh, I had entered that and I was looking at that uh, particular coin. So we've so far done that, done 15%. I'm now out of my position, just purely based on this previous, or I've, I've taken profit. I've got a very small amount open still. Um, but for myself, exactly what ads had just drawn in. This previous high is the reason why I had exited because I was, I was expecting a little bit of a pullback. Now, what I'm kind of expecting is a pullback perhaps to this level here, uh, which would be sort of around the 185 sort of zone before a continued move back up. And the reason why I say that is because we punctured through that, uh, that uh, upper supply very, very well, quite confidently, even though we are pretty damn oversold on both. Our uh, steamroller indicator here indicates that we've got some oversold conditions and then we're starting to retrace a little bit on our RSI as well. Ad. So where we sit right now, uh, as it lines up quite well, with uh, with our MAs that we speak about a lot of the time, that sort of 185 zone is, is kind of my level of interest at the moment. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, oh, sorry, I was just very, very keenly drawing in my, uh, my TA. Um, but, uh, you know, I've identified some levels. I, I did change it from here to here because this one's more notable. We've got a retest to the left-hand side and that's why we are getting that reaction as we see it on the chart currently. And of course, we do have the major pivot point to the upside uh, as well to, uh, to fall back on. But 185 does ring a bell and it looks good for me uh, because, yes, as Ty did mention, we have the previous liquidity to the left hand side. We do have a level of uh, supply here that is being uh, respected and, you know, tying that up very nicely, you know, with the over bought conditions when we see it on steamroller on the RSI as well. This is a match made in heaven, one, two, three. And then we've got a, you know, a argument, should we say, for a movement to the downside in which, you know, 185 to 188, I guess, would be the areas of interest. So very nice yeah. from, from, from me as well, Ty. Yeah, one, 185, maybe towards the, 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 I guess, the lower realms of the threshold. Yeah. But um, yeah, certainly 188 to 185 uh, is my level of interest. And Algo tends to have these moves as well. As you, as you trade coins, you will begin to become very familiar with their movements. And you can see how quickly Algo can move to the upside. Um, there's a lot of uh, hype around Algo at the moment. I do think if you go to coin market calendar, they've got something running in the next uh, 10 or 12 days as well. I can't quite remember what the what the event is the fundamentally, but uh, I do know that, that this particular coin will run on that hype. So certainly a coin I am watching on Algo, 15% uh, call since we've uh, since in, in the Discord the last couple of days. So pretty happy with that. All right, let's get on to XRP and have a look at uh, XRP USD. One of Ads' favorite coins, um, not one that I have charted personally uh, recently. No, neither have I, to be honest. So we'll, we'll TA, uh, TA up this fresh for you. And, and as Ads uh, does that, we'll uh, remind you again, unitytradinggroup.com forward slash 
uh, Supply and Demand. That's a, about an hour video masterclass, but there's also a breakdown there, uh, like a blog guide telling you exactly how you enter and exit based on supply and demand. And what is supply and demand? It's really just liquidity zones. It's looking at zones where there are buys or it's looking at zones where are the most uh, selling pressure or buying pressure. And they are related to the most important pivots on that particular coin. So you can see this is a very important pivot before we had moves to the downside. You can see this is uh, not as, as equally as uh, as important, but you can see there was a small consolidation yeah. here before we continue to the downside. Where we have these very big moves, these are considered high quality supply zones or where we have these significant bounces, these are con uh, considered high quality demand zones. And these, these ones here are a little less high quality because they sort of occurred in the, the I guess the motion of the, the complete move to the downside or upside. So um, as we approach this demand zone, we've not quite hit it as of yet. And XRP seems to be one of those coins that kind of just comes out of nowhere. It flounders for a little bit while every, every other coin makes their move. And then as things simmer, XRP just tends to explode. So as we move up to the to this uh, supply zone, you can see that 113 level is really important to break through because as we said before with, uh, with Ethereum, I think, or BTC more so, this structure to the left, there's there's nothing here. There's really nothing holding this back once we break that level, ads. Yeah, exactly. And when we look immediately to the left, that is apparent. Um, and, you know, and just to, to reiterate or, or move forward on those explanations, we're looking at that massive pivot point up the top here, which is very nice in terms of the distance between if we do have a break to the upside, uh, you know, 20% is nothing to, to snarl at. But um, when we do have these levels, uh, just to to expand on this one here, it's not, you know, it's very hard to spot. Uh, you need to be doing this for quite some time, you know, have a little bit of experience drawing these in because it's a little bit hard to spot because all I'm looking for is the, you know, the decent candle, I guess, uh, that corresponds nicely with our level of fibs and uh, with some liquidity to the left-hand side. And of course that is being respected at this point in time. But in terms of where we're headed now, uh, you could really give it, give an idea or, or you know, takes inspiration from BTC and some of the other pairs because we have had that movement from swing low to swing high and we we have had you know those I wouldn't say retests just yet we have had some movement towards those levels at 38 and of course we can see all the way down to the 50 where we've got some liquidity being respected at that point as well so that would be my area uh, to look for in the immediate term where we do have something along the lines of let's say the 50 and then we could you know head up to the 121 area where we see the negative 61 and some of the other liquidity sitting to the left hand side you know past the parabolic downside we can see this area here being very respected uh, as we move across so that would be the play on the four hour time frame if we are you know to see sustained levels of buying when we do get to the 38 50 and 61 more, more notably the 50 type yeah, and what's really beautiful, if we do go to the daily time frame and overlay gravy train, uh, I guess we could probably call that our God mode indicator. It's uh, ridiculous how well this thing works. If we overlay that on the one day time frame, you'll see that the level that you've uh, you've popped in aligns very, very well mm. with that overall zone. So that one sort of 20 level uh, is going to signify quite a, a strong level of interest as we head up towards that 140 zone. So the, the correlation of BTC and XRP is quite strong as well. So even though a lot of alts will move uh, simultaneously with BTC, a number of them don't. So as one of the higher liquidity uh, altcoins, it certainly has its moments where it, um, where it can run by itself, but it also tends to piggyback a little bit on, on BTC. So use BTC as your litmus for the rest of the market. You don't want to go in charting an altcoin before you have charted BTC uh, because BTC is, is still the primary pair. It dictates the market and many things will follow its move. And, and, and conversely, many coins will, will suffer if it has moves to the upside as well. So you really want to be paying attention to what BTC is doing before you rush into these altcoins. But mark my words, uh, October is going to be very, very good for us traders, as will uh, the, the final quarter of the year. So if you're sitting on your hands right now, it, it's really time to, to, to be blunt, to get your shit together, because uh, you don't want to be sitting back looking at this in three months time going, man, I wish I entered on X coin or I just had a punt. 
It doesn't matter whether you're trading with a hundred grand, a grand, a hundred bucks. It really doesn't matter. Have a go, build your confidence up and, um, and, and fucking get into this market. Stop wasting time. And, <laughs> This is life-changing opportunities that this that this market will present with you. Don't be the person that looks back and regrets it. I, I, I really, really mean that. Give, give it a crack. If you fail, come into the Discord and, and shoot the shit with us. We'll, we'll steer you right. Um, one more thing with XRP, just most notably on the four-hour time frame with Gravy Train, we've got the top of the cloud, you know, corresponding very nicely with the level of demand. And then, of course, we have the cloud that is forming in green, corresponding very nicely with the 50. So uh, a nice another or a good another level of correlation there. One hundred percent. Look for multiple things that tell you the same thing. Don't mm. just bang a million indicators or things on to, to try and prove a bias. Mm. Use reliable indicators, steamroller, RSI, supply demand, gravy train, whatever it is that you use, Ichimoku perhaps. Let the things tell you them without forcing a bias. And we've got multiple things there telling us the same thing. So it seems seems pretty relevant at the time being. All right, let's get into the last one. LTC USD. This is one uh, that I again or that we that we charted inside uh, the Discord the other day at around 162 because it had made on the daily or uh, a bit of a, a falling wedge pattern and i said this is one that we need to watch and that was at 160 uh sorry excuse me not 162 142 uh and then here we are 20 bucks later so for where it stands for me right now um i, I kind of i really uh, I'm looking at that one sort of 60 zone um, to, to hold before any moves to the upside. Again, looking at the, the four hour, we are oversold on the four hour, whether it be on the RSI or Steamroller, which uh, which called that very, very well. So as ads bangs up his top supply zones, I really do think that in Q4, we're going to see some pretty decent runs from LTC. Um, I don't know why, it just when you just get a little bit of a feeling about a coin uh, it's often correct but ltc is certainly one of them for me at the moment so looking at that golden pocket zone 157 may even be a, a notable sort of level but as long as we can hold that golden pocket zone or that 50 i think we will be uh, well on our way and don't expect to see moves uh, coins make moves instantly you know the, the, i think 99 percent of people watching this will be more profitable if they just buy and hold don't just jump into a position, jump out of a position and freak out. Just buy and hold the fucker um, and even do a test and, and buy a hundred bucks of LTC, LTC or one LTC and just hold it for the rest of the year and see what happens and use it as a, as a bit of a measure of strength of your own, uh, your own ego. So yeah, one, uh, 160, 157 is, uh, is my area that I'm uh, yeah. very interested in. And another simple thing that you could use is something like the moving averages, for example. We've got a, a moving average cluster around that 160 zone. So um, a little bit more bias to show you that there's certainly support in that area. Absolutely. And it looks good, man. It really does. It's very consistent. Uh, the market is moving uh, very consistently across the USDD pairs or the USD pairs as well. So you know, a lot of things lining up very nicely and uh, and the FIBs lining up very nicely as well with the, the previous liquidity that we've seen on the charts, you know, more, more notably on this one, uh, of course, the 157 and of course, in between that level at 161 to 157. So uh, looking good. A hundred percent. And just very quickly, the other ones, we're not going to chart them, but I will just tell you some other ones. Zill USD is one I'm watching. AVAX, that's uh, really beautifully following a parallel channel at the moment. I'm looking for a hundred dollar plus AVAX in the next few weeks. Uh, ETC would be one if uh, ETH continues its run as well. And a little cheeky one that I haven't charted for a little bit, RLC tends to be um, mimicking LTC quite nice at the moment. So RLC, uh, which is Isaac, um, I, excuse me, I exec. So those are some of my alt picks for the time being. But we said at the beginning of this video, how can you get your coins charted? That's easy. Head to the Discord link below and come in and ask Ads and I. Just tag us in the general channel and tag us uh, with the, the two or three most popular coins that you want charted. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be TAing coins that you ask for on a Monday and following them throughout the course of the week on Discord and then doing a Thursday night update to see how our TA played out. And if it doesn't work, we'll deconstruct the trade and tell you why it didn't work. If it does work, We'll again uh, re-emphasize why we charted things the way we did on Monday, and we'll continue following these coins, uh, coins for the course of the month. So if you have questions on these coins, we're all in them together. We're all charting and trading them together. Come on in, ask us questions, and uh, let's have a really solid month of trades uh, trades together ads. Absolutely. Jump in the, uh, the links down below, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you there. Leave, a, leave us a like and subscribe to the channel if you found this interesting or you know insightful in any way.
Easy done. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll see you on Thursday nights. And for everything we do, unitytradinggroup.com. Look forward to seeing you inside the Discord and uh, we'll see you real soon. No worries. Bye-bye.